Don't hide your smile. I'm not going to be in your way a long time this morning. I just have a feeling that God is, is doing something because there is so much going on and there was so much tugging for me not to be here this morning. Uh, but when God gives an assignment, he makes a way for that assignment to be carried forward. And let that be a lesson in and of itself. That even though the world will stand up against you, uh, if God has given you assignment, there's a clear evidence that he will, it is an assignment from God because he will help you to do that assignment. Uh, the last couple of days as I was uh, getting inspiration for this, I realized that I'm, I'm taken back to a whole lot of my roots as a just plain down to earth country type preacher. Amen. Preacher. They didn't call them pastors uh, or minister this or that. They just said preacher. You know, we as part of mankind are kind of employers. Oh, you guys, ushers can take their seats. Our employers. Now, we've all had jobs. We've all applied for jobs. But we're employers. And as employers, we have a job that needs to be done that we cannot do ourselves. All right? Just stay with me. You get to hire one of two individuals, two spirits, that are capable of doing things in your life. We get to hire them. I get to hire them. You get to hire them. Your family members hire them. In fact, the scripture says everybody will make a hire. They are being hired to help us to get through this life. Amen. All the little twists and turns, all the little nuances, the things that go up, the things that come down, the things that challenges us, the things that we have to uh, deal with on a daily basis. Amen. <clears throat> and if you don't think you have a lot, just keep living. But you get to hire help for that. And what's amazing is the other thing that you cannot do for yourself, you cannot save yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Try as you might, you cannot save yourself. Everybody that lives will die. Amen. Everyone. So you need to hire salvation. You need to hire eternity. Work with me. On the one side, applying for that job is the devil. And the other side is Jesus Christ. Amen. The one applicant is the father of lies, a deceiver. Will convince you that things that aren't are. On the other side, the applicant gave his own blood. Amen. Sees into the future. Cannot lie. And loves you. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't hire somebody that loves them? Amen. I mean, they're the best at it. But it just happens to be that he is the best. When I was looking at putting together a lesson for today, I asked God for inspiration, and usually I get it right away. Gabe, it don't always include a cheeseburger. But I was looking for inspiration and it didn't come right away. Little did I know that the God that sees into the future said, you're going to have an incredibly busy week. You're going to deal with your own health. You're going to deal with family emergencies. You're going to deal with a lot of stuff. And as you deal with it, you're going to come to the realization that life itself is a preparation for this message, for this Palm Sunday. That's what it was for Jesus the Christ. That's why the, the, the verses for today's lesson is in John. I kept asking God, I said, God, just, this, it's in John. That's not where I, I thought the th story of Jesus was. John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Familiar scripture, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the beginning. Yes. At the start. Mm-hmm. In the beginning was the Word. Mm -hmm. And the Word was God. All right. That's where he started. In the beginning. My Lord. 
before anything else was. It sets the stage. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hold that thought. Sometimes some things press to you in the spirit. Hold that thought. Let me calm down and stop for a second. I'm going to ask for just a moment of prayer as I pray for Linda and her family. Is everything all right? Okay. Linda and her family, they're having a particular challenge with one of the family members facing transition. God is far too wise to make mistakes and too just to be unfair. Mm-hmm. Holds each of us in the hollow of his hand. Amen. Knows today and the future and prepares us for that and gives us the necessary strength to overcome every situation. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. 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 We're hiring somebody. People choose. We taught about that in a, in a Tuesday night lesson. As we move into this, in the beginning, before there was anything, God, in the beginning, at the start, before there was anything, God, that was the start. Was the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you. Here now, mm-hmm. in the spirit. But God decided to send himself in the form of Jesus Christ to dwell among us. And take us to, I said I wouldn't be long today and I won't. To take us to an understanding of him as we prepare to hire either Jesus or the devil to make an informed decision. I don't know if anybody here has ever hired anybody, but you want to make an informed decision when you hire somebody, right? Amen. You want to know what they can and cannot do. You want to know if they can take care of what it is you need to have done, what you've decided you want done, right? Amen. If the pay scale is right, <coughs> You can afford it. Jesus, in the beginning, God incarnate, the creator of everything, became flesh to dwell among us. And he has a particular characteristic that he can see into the future. Uh He can see into the future. This is Palm Sunday. Do you know that he told his disciples to go into the city and in the city you're going to find a a donkey's colt that has never been ridden on. Now he had never seen that, but he knew the colt was there. In fact, he said when they ask you, are you stealing this colt? Tell them that the master has need of it. And when you tell them that, these people that you never met before are going to give you the donkey. Yes, they will, sir. Now back then, donkey was money. It wasn't just property, it was money. They killed horse thieves. But they went and got the donkey, the God incarnate, is preparing to come humbly to you and me with his job application. So is the devil. And if you look at his resume, he says, I came into the world when God asked him. He said, going to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. That means eat you up. Take from you to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. Now, he didn't hide that. Made it plain. In fact, when he ran into Jesus, he took him up on a high place and lied to him when he was hungry. Christ said no. And then I started digging a little deeper into this applicant, looking for information about him, about why I should hire him 
or why you should hire Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Amen. On this Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I found all this in his resume. <laughs> all this. The first thing, it found that he was born of a virgin. He was born of a virgin, miraculously born. Then as he grew, he went out to a wedding in Canaan and he turned water into wine. Mm. He healed the son of an, a royal official. Amen. He just keep on keeping miracles. This is Jesus, this applicant for the job. In Capernaum, he removed the demonic spirit at Peter's mother-in-law. He healed her from a sickness. Healing the sick during the miracles of Jesus. Catching a large number of fish. He was quite a fisherman. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, he is quite a fisherman. Amen. It means that he goes out to get something, he gets all of it. Amen. <clears throat> when nobody else can get it. Leprosy back then was, and now, <clears throat> Is a horrible disease. It's a disqualifying disease. It's a separating disease. And everything that's bad in a life is represented in leprosy. And he went out and healed the leper. Amen. So he had power over leprosy. He had power over sickness. He had power over diseases. This is the individual we're hiring to, to grant us eternal life. There was a centurion son. Healed him. Healed a paralyzed man. Restored a withered hand. All right. Raised the widow's son from the death. Mm -hmm. From death. And then he calmed the sea. Amen. He said, "Peace be still." Amen. Said whatever storm is in your life, he is capable. If you're hiring, to say, "Peace be still." Amen. If you need that job done, he's the man. Because here, there's proof of him doing it. He didn't just say he could do it. He's done it. There's a whole lot of folks say they can do something, and they can't do it. Amen. Amen. Or it take them a long time. Or they go out and get the same Jesus you're going to get to get done what they say they can do. <laughs> Heal. He calmed the sea. Anybody here ever spoke to the wind and the rain? <laughs> I want to hire that guy. Let us continue. He went into a place called Caesarea. I actually preached about that. Found a man living in the tombs. This guy is going into town on a donkey. Had been in Caesarea, found a man in the tomb possessed by demons, legions of demons. Mm -hmm. This is our potential employee. Spoke to that man, and the demons came out. And the demons declared him to be the son of God with power. Amen. The demons declared it. And we asked the question, in the midst of that, aren't we at least as smart as a pig? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. There was a woman with a problem with bleeding. He, she ran into Jesus Christ, and the problem was solved. You got a problem in your life, run into Jesus. There's a guy named Jarius, his daughter. Amen. Jesus healed him, healed her. There were two blind men. They met Jesus. There was a mute demon-possessed man got healed. Healing of a 38-year invalid. Jesus did it. And after he did that, he went out for an encore and fed 5,000 people and their families. Amen. After doing all that, after doing all that, I'd take a nap. He went out and fed 5,000 people and their families. Amen. And this is, as, as the dinner entertainment, he went and walked on water. Amen. <laughs> That's Jesus. 
Excuse me, that's my God. Do you know him? Do you know him? If you don't know him, check him out. He does this stuff. This is the one headed to town on a donkey. There was a miraculous healing of many people at Gasseret. Healing of a girl possessed by a demon. And them demons, he just keeps running them demons out. All kinds of demons. I don't know what your problem is. I know what some of mine are. And Jesus is capable of doing all of them. Not, not because he said it, because he's done it. Amen. When you need a pipe fix, you don't go get an electrician. You get the plumber. Amen. 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 All right. Healing the deaf man with a speech impediment. You can't talk so well, see Jesus. Amen. You got a problem with telling folks something? See Jesus. Amen. And if you tell them the right stuff, guess what? He'll fix it for you. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will, sir. And then after that, he fed another 4,000 4, gave. Yeah, this is like the best smuggler's barge in the world. <coughs> he was a blind man. He was a man born blind. Whew! And he asked the question, who sinned, his father or, 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 or the man? And they, he said, well, you know what? It's actually neither. This, this brother was born blind just so you could see how powerful I am. Thank you, Lord. He said, I look back before this joker was born, excuse me, before this blessed person was born, I thought I'm just a country preacher, before this, this person was born, and I used him to show you that I don't care what happened to you. It didn't even have to happen when you got here, it could have happened before you got here. But whatever it is, people say I was born like that. Well, guess what? He can fix it like that. Amen. Amen. I'm getting excited about this because, you know, I got some problems too. Amen. More blind. Healed a demon-possessed boy. Catching a fish with a coin in its mouth. Hi, all the fish in the sea, you find the one that's got a coin in his mouth? Taxes. You got a tax bill. You got, you got a tax bill, electric bill, gas bill, uh, food bill, crazy bill. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. God. Healing a blind and mute man who was demon possessed. Healing a woman of an 18 year infirmity. Let's just talk about that for a second. <clears throat> we were out in every place yesterday and all kind of stuff around stuff like that. I didn't notice everything that came in con I came in contact with and stuff, but I paid attention to all them alligators I saw. <laughs> Jesus walking down the street. Press of people pressed up against him. This is your potential employee pressed up against him. This woman had been to all kinds of doctors, soothsayers, hospitals, lawyers, put on all kinds of salves, ointments, done everything she could to fix this problem, and it did not get fixed, spent all her money, and saw Jesus walking by one day with the people pressed up against him, and she went by and couldn't get next to him, but could reach out and touch what? The hem of his garment. And he stopped in his tracks. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had been out there in the Everglades watching them alligators and, and all that stuff in the, in, the, in, the, in the Everglades, and all of a sudden a mosquito touched my jacket, I wouldn't even notice it. But he stopped in his tracks with people pressed all around him. Virtual, all of them virtual. saying, That's you know, it stuff. just... Help me, help me, do this for me, do that for me. I'm here to get, get, get. But she went because of her faith and just said, if I could just touch him, I don't have to ask him for healing. If I could just get in contact with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. I got a problem nobody can fix. Amen. If I could just get in contact with the man. Don't you know that if you could just get in contact with Jesus, it ain't good to know that all you got to do is fall down on your knees. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to run and chase him down the street. You can just fall on your knees. You can stand up in the corner and cry out from the heart. And he will stop in the midst of everything. Say, who touched me? 
Huh. I felt that. I felt that. Somebody needs something, and they mean it. They're not playing. They're not coming to church faking. They say, I need this. I got to get there and just touch the hem of his garment. Touch it. He said, virtue. He said, master, don't you see all these people pressed around you? Why say that somebody touched me? Everybody's trying to touch you. So what are you talking about, master? Virtue. Somebody. Say so you want, you want, you want him to move in your life? Yes. Huh. Touch. Right now, reach your hand up. Just, just reach your hand up. You can touch. Just come in contact and touch. And it's gonna move in your life. Amen. Right now, right where you are. Right where you are. He's gonna to touch. And to have a touch from God, all you got to do is reach out. Whew. All you got to do is reach out. And as you reach for him, he reaches back for you. Even if your arms are too short, he can reach further than anything. He can find you in the valley. He can find you in the jailhouse, reaching out. He can find you in the hospital, reaching out. He can find you in the back room, reaching out. He can find you in a sick, sad situation, reaching out. He will find you when you reach. And virtue. Virtue. Oh, go out. Help us, Jesus. He healed 10 lepers. They didn't all come back, but he healed them. Then he raised Lazarus from the dead. Let him die and then raised him. Could have healed him, but he raised him. And he raised him as a giant billboard to tell us before he told us ultimately to tell you, I got power over even death. Amen. Amen. You know what? Y'all afraid of death. But I'm powerful over death. I didn't have to get there. Y'all wanted me there. I didn't have to get there. Because I got power over that too. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't breathe life into a child and have him get up. But y'all let Lazarus go into the grave. And be everything that you're afraid of. In fact, he was thinking. And you told me he was thinking. You told me you didn't believe. You said, Lord, we love you, but you know what? He dead now. I've been dead for two days, and he's probably stinking. Okay, this is going something else. Because this is, ah, you've done some great things, but this is just too much. And I declared that he had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Name. Now let's catch that. Let's pay attention. He had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he had just said, come forth, all the dead, dead would got up. All right. All right. All of them would got up. He said, you know what? I got to call him by name because if I don't call him by name, I have the power mm-hmm. Amen. to get them all up. Right. If you don't believe me, when they crucified him, the dead in the city got up and walked around. That's right. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I have the power over death. So it's just the thing that you think that is the most tragic thing in life. He has the power over that. God knew the day would come. And he knew that day would be that you would be in horrible misery, thinking everything was hopeless and lost. In fact, dead. But just when you're at the limits of your abilities, you're at the beginning of God's capabilities. Amen. Yes, sir. He spoke to a fig tree. Excuse me. He also healed blind by Bartimaeus. But he came in contact with a fig tree. He said, you know what? You got a job to produce figs. That's all you got to do is make figs. And every time I come by, you ought to have some figs. When people come by, there ought to be some figs. That's all you got to do. Make the figs. All you got to do is be usher. All you got to do is preach. That's all you got to do. 
I come by and you ain't making no figs. So really what you good for? Amen. Curse the fig tree. Fig tree died. Mm-hmm. Talk about sending a message. God says, you know, I called you to do something, you ought to do it. Amen. My Lord, my Lord. You ought to do it. You could be the best fig tree on the planet. If you just be obedient. But if you're not, there's consequences. Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm gonna leave that alone. Let's let your pastor deal with that. <laughs> and then lastly, when they put him in, it was they'll come to rest him. <clears throat> You know, some of us wish we had this kind of power. But when he's coming to rest him, uh, his disciples decided they were going to fight, cut the, cut the guard's ear off. Cut his ear off. And I said, no, don't fight. That man just doing his job. This is prophecy being fulfilled. Y'all don't see it. You've been walking with me. Y'all didn't know it. But this is prophecy being fulfilled. So he went and did what I was. no plastic surgeon today could do. Put his ear back on. That's a happy man. Amen. <laughs> That's a happy man. I got my ear back. I was, was going to walk around with one ear. Got his ear back. This is a job application. Sounds colorful and all of that, but it's true. All these things that our, our potential employee can do. <laughs> but as Ronco would say in those late night commercials, and there's more. <laughs> and there's more. Amen. Because now we get to the title of today's lesson. Run through 33 years, three years of ministry. And now, Reverend, it's Friday. It's Friday. Mm-hmm. And all of our lives, we come to the day when it's Friday. Mm-hmm. Worked all week. Done all kinds of things. And now it's Friday. And we pick up with him arriving to town. People putting palms down to honor him, saying, Hosanna, coming into town. But because he can see into the future, mm-hmm. he knows it's Friday. <clears throat> and the time for just putting on a show is over. It's Friday. But Sunday's coming. Amen. It's Friday. They're plotting to crucify our new employee. It's Friday. He ride, finds himself riding on a donkey in the town. Amen. Knowing that we need a savior. He could have gone anywhere. He could have gone out and fed more 5,000. Could have restored more sight. Could have healed. Could have walked on water. But it's Friday and he must go to town. Because he has a date in town. And it's now Friday. All the work is done. And he's got to mount that donkey and ride humbly as the one that said in the beginning was the word. And the word is God and it's with God. But now it's Friday and we need a savior. Amen. Amen. The job is not finished until it's finished. He knows where Gargotha's hill is. And he must ride the donkey to the sound of Hosanna, hallelujah, praising him. And the same voices that praised him will curse him and say crucify him. Mm -hmm. Our employee, who you going to hire? Amen. Praise God.